please feel free to participate and ask questions along the way. Um, we'll get the deck up here in a second here with uh, Thank you. Okay. So if you're seeking outside funding, recruiting key personnel, or you just want to increase your chances of success, a business plan is crucial. The research and thought process you use to prepare your plan requires you to look at your business from all angles. Oftentimes, your ideas and plans will be challenged by your own findings. A business plan explains in black and white your venture's feasibility and reflects your management and leadership capabilities. Whether yours is a new business or an established business in expansion mode, you and your team need a clear understanding of your company's financials, customer base, competition, operations, and future plans. Researching and writing a plan takes significant time and effort. Plan on spending several weeks or even months creating your business plan. Before you begin the business planning process, read through the following pointers to help you start off on the right track. It's normal to have two versions of your plan, one for internal use as a management tool, and the other that is usually more detailed if you're seeking outside funding. Focus your plan on your intended reader. If your readers are investors or lenders, consider talking with them first to learn what they want to see in the business plan before you start to prepare yours. Each institution is different, so ask them what aspect of a business plan is their primary focus. How long they would like the business plan to be and what supporting documentation is necessary. Be honest and realistic with your financial projections. Investors and lenders are looking for realistic projections. Don't underestimate their knowledge of your business or industry. You can lose credibility quickly by presenting unrealistic financial projections. Use layman's terms when explaining your product or service. If the reader doesn't understand what you're saying, there's little chance that they'll get involved with your business. Substantiate your statements. Provide supporting documentation whenever you're making critical statements. For example, if you're saying that your product is better than your competitors, you'll want to explain your competitive advantage and how that affects your customers. Stay flexible. Your plan should change as your business grows or as your market changes. Try to evaluate and update your plan at least each quarter. While all business plans are very specific to their particular business or industry, they all include the same basic elements. Those are the executive summary, your products and services, the market, your marketing strategy, the competition, your operations, your management team, personnel, financial data, and supporting documentation as Mike needs to let somebody in. Okay, great. So let's start with the executive summary. The executive summary is often considered the most important section of your business plan. This section briefly tells the reader where your company is, where you want to take it, and why your business idea will be successful. If you're seeking financing, the executive summary is your first opportunity to grab a potential investor's interest. It should include crisp, clear description of the following elements. Describe your business. Provide a summary of your company's objectives. Provide a brief description of your products and services. Provide a description of your market and your customer base. Provide a brief look at your competitors and your competitive advantage. Provide who your key team members are. 
and provide an overview for your financial funding requirements. A great business solves customers' problems. If your summary cannot clearly describe in one or two pages how your business will solve a particular problem and make a profit, then it's very possible the opportunity does not exist. Or your plan to take advantage of a genuine opportunity is not well developed. So think of it as a snapshot to your business plan. Don't try to hype up your business. Focus on helping the reader Get a great feel for what you do, how you plan to do it, and how you will succeed. And now Francesca will take over for the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Are there any questions on, on what Joe has presented so far? We, we encourage you to, to ask any questions you have along the way. And I think we skipped our, <laughs> our uh, the introductions of ourselves. Um, my name is Francesca DiBianco, and I've been with TD Bank for 20 years. I've been in banking for 32 years, and uh, I, in another life, was a small business owner. I spent most of my career um, working with small businesses, and that's where I like to be, in the trenches with decision makers like you. So, uh, again, we encourage any questions, and, and after the presentation, please take our cards and uh, feel free to give us a call. Um, with, yeah, for uh, resources, questions, anything, anything you might need. And Joe, you got anything? Um, yeah, again, Joseph Park, relationship manager with uh, TD Bank. Been with the bank for 10 years and in banking for 20. Um, yeah. Um, so basically, a business plan is a tool, and I think um, it's it's really uh, what we what we've all been through over the through the last two years is is um, it really underscores how important a tool like a business plan is because businesses that survived the pandemic and even thrive were ones that could make could tweak their business plan and and um, and try to and and try to um, Reimagine uh, businesses trying to reimagine themselves to meet current needs. So restaurants that that were closed to the public, you know, could transition to takeout business or delivery, um, and uh, you know, yeah. But, but that's just one example. But basically, it, it is a tool um, to help keep you focused, and also it's you know internally, but also it's a it's a it's it's a way to communicate what you are um, going to do with your business, what your business is already doing to a, an external audience like a bank or a private investor. So in uh, your business uh, plan, you're going to start off by describing what kind of business you're in. Uh, provide a brief description. Keep it short and concise. Then explain what your company's objectives are. Describe your company's short-term goals and what you're achieving to what you're hoping to achieve over the next few years. For example, I'm planning to gain 60% market share in my in my uh, industry. I'm planning to become the leading provider of rear view mirrors <laughs> to the automotive industry. I I um, am going to open up five new geographical markets for my product. Then briefly describe your strategy to reach your goals. Next, <clears throat> provide a clear and concise description of your product or service in layman's terms. Identify what stage the product is in. Are you just you know, imagining it now? Is it in the concept stage? Do you have a prototype of your product or is it market ready? If it's still in concept or prototype stage, what are the necessary steps to bring the product or service to market? Explain what those are so your audience understands how you're going to get to where you're going <laughs> or you're planning to go. Next, explain who your target audience is and why they need your product or service. If you have an existing business, list your major clients and or the percentage of the market that you already own. If your business is new, describe your company's market potential. 
For example, if you're opening a daycare center, you want to have data supporting the amount of families in a certain geography. Or, um, you know, talk about how many new home, new home purchases are, are taking place. Families with children are coming into the area. Um, you also going to want to talk about other daycare centers in your market and um, the percentage of customers you reali realistically expect to gain by opening your center. Next, write a persuasive statement of why the business will succeed. Briefly explain your products or services competitive advantage relate relative to your to the other providers in your market and and uh, discuss how your product or service is better than what's currently available. You have to you have to sell. <laughs> um, then include a timeline and details on how any funds you're looking uh, for from investors or banks will be used. You're going to want to provide a breakdown of where the money's coming from and how it's going to be used because your investors or your funders want to know that their their money is going to be well spent and that's going to have a return. If it's a bank, they want to know that it's, there's a good chance of it being paid back. Um, project your revenues on the basis of anticipated market share and the timeline for your company's profitability. If you have an existing business, provide a brief financial snapshot of the company sales, cash flow, balance sheet. Now it's time to delve further into your business and provide more uh, detailed information on your products and services in your business plan. So you're going to uh, talk about your uh, market, your competitive advantage, your, your management team, and your funding requirements. It's important for the reader to fully understand your current and prospective product and service offerings. So use plain English when describing. Don't overwhelm the reader with technical explanations or jargon that, that won't be familiar to them because you're gonna lose you're gonna lose their interest. If appropriate, discuss any patents, trademarks, copyright that the company currently owns or has recently applied for as well as any confidential or non-disclosure protection the company has already obtained. Be honest about the barriers that you, your business has um, to bringing your products and markets to, to uh, for products and services to market. Um, for example, government regulation, your competitors, the high cost of developing a product, the need for manufacturing materials, especially in this environment where there's so many, so many factors um, negatively impacting the ability to obtain um, raw materials, parts to, to manufacture or, or uh, assembly product. Be sure to address the following questions in this session. If your product, is your product already, or service already on the market, or is it in a research and development stage? If you're still in the development stage, what's your rollout strategy or timeline to bring the product to market? You want to be concrete and, and um, but also honest about your timeline. What makes your product unique, product or service unique? What competitive advantage does your product or service have over the other providers in your market? And can you price your product or service competitively and still maintain a healthy profit margin? Investment investors look for management teams with full knowledge of their target market. So if you're launching a new product, include your market research data in your business plan. If you have if you have existing customers, provide customer profiles detailing their purchasing habits and their buying cycle. This section of the plan is extremely important 
because there's no need or desire for your product or service. If there's no need or desire for your product or service, there won't be any customers. And if your business has no customers, there's no business. So include the following elements in your, in your plan. A detailed description of your target market. A detailed description of your niche and why you personally chose it. An explanation of the market demand for your product or service. And this requires supporting documentation. So any data you can include in, in the plan to, um, to explain the, the demand for, the product, for your product or service would be important to include. What percentage of market share do you think you can capture with, with the product or service, the, with your company's product or service? What's the growth potential of the market? Again, this would also require supporting documentation. Will your share of the market increase or decrease as the market grows? In other words, how popular will, how much penetration will your product or service have? Are you going to have an increasing share of that market, or is are uh, more people going to come into the market so your your share will decrease as as there are more providers coming in? How will you satisfy market growth? Are you set up to, to expand? I mean, how many more people are you going to need? Or are you going to need a bigger location? How will you price your goods or services to remain competitive in a, pro in a growing market? Continue to, to expand your client base. Once you've identified who your market is, you'll want to explain your strategy for reaching your customers and distributing your products or services. Spend time developing a creative marketing plan as it'll be critical to your business's success. Potential investors will look at this section carefully to make sure there's a viable method to reach your target audience at a price point that makes sense. You want to, you want to introduce your products at, a, at competitive uh, price points. Otherwise, um, you're going to have difficulty uh, creating a market for them. If you have current samples of marketing materials or strategies that have proven successful for you, include them with your plan. Start by analyzing your competitors' marketing strategies to learn how they reach their market. If the strategy is working, consider adopting a similar plan. <laughs> Take the best of everybody, of uh, everything that's already out there. If there's room for improvement, work on creating an innovative plan that will position your product or service at the forefront of the of your in the minds of your potential customers. Once you've figured out how you're going to reach the market. Discuss in detail your strategy for distributing the product or service to your customer. Your, your audience needs to know how you are going to get your uh, product or service from your facility to your customers. So you need to, you need to be concrete about that. It needs to be very clear how that's going to happen. So are you going to use UPS? Um, are you going to uh, send your products out by the mail? You're going to deliver them personally. Are you going to hire sales reps? Have distributors or resellers um, carry your product, or are you going to use some other method? What are the costs associated with your proposed delivery methods, and how will you track the effectiveness of the methods that you're using to get your product and service services out there? Do we have any questions so far? On some of the things where you talked about what might be a negative, is it better to, to put that in there or leave it out, particularly like how you're positioned to grow with the market? If you don't think you have the space or the capacity to grow with the market, would you leave that out or would you put it in and try to finesse it? I would, yeah, I would, I would put it in and, and address it because I can tell you for sure, <laughs> bankers don't like surprises. And the more information they have, the better advocates they can be for you and your business as far as, as uh, you know, getting credit approved for you as, um, and you, or getting you 
the credit initially or expanding the credit relationship, the more you know, because those issues will come up. And it's, it's really better to address them up front. And maybe, you know, there, there are issues that would lead you to decide to do something else, you know. So it, it's, um, they are, they are, they should be in there. Yeah, full transparency is always the best policy. If there are issues, you want to let us know up front so we can address it up front instead of having surprises along the way, like Franny said. Right, right. You don't want the credit officer to, <laughs> to come up with an issue that, you know, hasn't been addressed by you or, or Makes perfect sense. Client. So the transparency issue is, is, uh, is the hardest part for often for small business owners. And uh, the best advice I got many, many years ago when I was in business uh, was from my accountant who told me to, to go see my banker and, and be transparent. And, uh, and I did that with my business at a time when my business was really struggling. I was in the food service hospitality business and I was growing, but I didn't have enough money to grow. And, if, um, and this was back in, uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. And, um, and so I can tell you that my banker turned out to be one of my best business advisors. But, my, but, I, but over the years, having been here at the chamber now for a lot of years, I hear business owners constantly tell me that they're afraid to talk to their banker. They're afraid to tell and use their banker as a trusted advisor because they're afraid to tell them if they're having a problem, if they, you know, if they, if they can't meet that credit, you know, availability that, that bankers tend to use. So, so I think uh, share with us a little bit, you know, what you're seeing in the banking industry uh, and perhaps even at, at, at TD about that relationship as a guidance to a business owner when that business owner has a problem and that you're just not going to run away from them and, and, and not necessarily help them find the capital that they need in ways. I mean, we, our title is relationship manager and I, I always say relationships are for the good times and the bad times. And um, so it's, it's always best to be open and um, honest with your banker because solution there are solutions to, to to problems i mean maybe maybe you know you'll you'll your business has reached a point where a non-bank um source of funding would work for now and then you know it will get you through the, this tunnel and then you, you would come back for for you know to be um for traditional bank financing but yeah you don't because if you try to if you try to cover the sun with your thumb <laughs> So your thumb's going to get burned, and uh, the problem's only going to get bigger. So that's what, okay, okay. No, I was going to say, Jim, though, the whole thing, and the reason I'm bringing these types of courses to the chambers is that TD wants to become a trusted advisor. If you notice, there's no product sale in here. This is informational. But how many people have those questions? They don't know who to turn to. Right. If we can be that confidant that you can come to and talk to, there are many avenues for raising capital. And that's actually another course, access to capital. Because there's SBA, there was all the PPP loans that were out there. There are many different vehicles other than going to other institutions that all they want to do is sell you something. You can't talk through your situation. But to the other gentleman's question, how being open and honest, transparency to Franny's point is the best way of really building that relationship and having that person you can go to and talk about these conditions. Because quite frankly, some people have a passion for going into a business, but they don't have the knowledge base to make it work. And what do they do? They fail in a year's time. They just can't be successful because they haven't thought it all the way through. To your point, how do I acquire additional capital when I get to that point where I need to grow, but don't know where to go? Exactly. And, and so, so just to, and I asked my question as an example, so we can have this conversation. Um, my business back then was growing so fast, but I couldn't, every time I, uh, I managed corporate cafeterias as part of my hospitality business. So every time I opened up a new contract, I needed a, a good amount of money to buy inventory and staff it and get it set up and ready to do business. But uh, I was doing that out of working capital. Because I couldn't borrow any more money, and and I also had receivables from the from the companies uh, that I was managing the cafeterias for. So I they wound my banker actually wound up helping me find a factoring company 
for a year that helped me get money on my accounts receivables until I built up the spot. I, I, I checked off the character. I checked off the capacity. I checked off even some collateral, but I didn't have all this. I didn't have all the seats. And back then, character was a, was a big deal, right? So, but I needed to just get a little bit more. Uh, I needed the company to be a little bit stronger in order for it was it was UJB back then, United Jersey Bank. Yes. And so, so it, it, I needed to get a little stronger for that person to be able to help us from the bank side. And I did. It took a year, but he, they helped me manage it. And it was my banker that helped me do that, and and uh, through the advice of my account. On the flip side to that, that's why it's so important to have a business plan and you update it on a regular basis because a lot of times when I speak to prospects or customers and we have a conversation about maybe a line of credit or any sort of a credit facility for their business and they come back and say, you know what, I'm okay, I don't really need it right now. And I tell them, listen, that's when you want to get it because by the time you need it, the bank might not be as willing to, to grant it to you. So that's very important to, to, to keep that in mind. So thank you for that. So now we have uh, the five C's of credit, which um, <clears throat> they're common to, to many, many financial institutions. But um, they're the components that go into a, uh, a bank's credit decision before extending lines of credit, term loan, commercial mortgage to a small business. The first one is character. Who are we lending? Uh, who who are these people <laughs> that we're lending money to? Um, are they current with their existing obligations? I mean, you, uh, one of the things the bank, I mean, a bank generally makes decisions, credit decisions on history. So if you have, if a business has, um, you know, liens or judgments or they're, you know, they're, they're reported late to, to the business credit bureaus, a bank's going to feel a little um, hesitant to lend money to somebody who already has that track record. Um, so you want to you want to lend to a company that uh, has a, uh, a track record of paying their obligations on time and responsibly. Um, credit is another uh, credit score is another component because basically what we have found, I think statistics show that uh, the credit of a small business owner and that of the business they run are, are very much one and the same in that if, if somebody is a train wreck in how they, how they manage their personal obligations, chances are how they run their, uh, how they manage their business obligations are going to mirror them. So, um, you know, we have a lot of people come, you know, apply for uh, loans who, uh, you know, in their mind, it's a separate thing. My business and me personally are two separate things. And even though I'm 90 days late on my car payment, <laughs> my business, we'd be lending to my business, not me. And it's not, it's not really how we look at it. It's the, the personal credit of the uh, small business business owner is a very important component <clears throat> of a credit decision. Capacity is the ability, is a business's ability to take on more, more debt. So uh, do they have enough to pay what they have now? And is there, is there room in the, in the cash flow to, to take on the obligations that they're, they're looking for now? Um, capital. Is the <laughs> Point. Is there is there enough cash to to uh, keep up with expenses day to day, and not only just enough? Is there a cushion should there be an unexpected expense or some kind of an emergency to um, carry you through the you know uh, a month or two of of, um, of more drains on cash than you anticipated? And finally, collateral um, assets, collateral or assets is just Pure loan. So for a line of credit, it's typically your accounts receivable, which are the it's the money that your customers owe you for goods or services that you build. So it's a legal obligation of your customer to pay you. Um, inventory, equipment, and real estate. Those are all those are all categories of uh, business assets that can be uh, used as collateral.
You can uh, review this workshop and, and many others at our Small Business Resource Center. Um, TDBank.com has a lot of uh, has a lot of programs, a uh, lot of information, a lot of educational uh, programs that you can that you can uh, follow personally. Um, you'll see videos and and worksheets covering topics like uh, creating a profit and loss statement, preparing um, a balance sheet, and uh, really really uh, so much more. <laughs> so you can even you can even um, download a business plan template from uh, tdbank.com small business resources. Uh, we also have a lot of resources for personal finance. So you, um, you can, we have lessons that you can see in 10 minutes on any device. Lessons in it. So you can learn about the uh, importance of your credit score and um, identity protection, uh, mortgages. So um, there really, there really is a, a, a font of information on our website. So please, we, we have it there for, for your use and for your, um, you know, and to help you with topics that you, you want to delve into a little more. Um, did anybody have any questions about the five C's? Of credit or any any other any other questions? Oh, the five C's. Are we able to? Can I share this with the group? Because I've been asking a lot of people have asked me if I could send this to them. Oh, so absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mike. Yes. Yes. Everybody virtual. You'll get it in your email after this. Right above you. I have a, a question on uh, you mentioned of uh, research earlier before uh, on small businesses sometimes don't have funds to do like a lot of research in, in the markets. Um, how in depth? Do the banks look at research and, and what type of things would they want to see if you had to do it on your own or you know within your your group you couldn't there are a lot of resources that are free online um like you know if you're if you're looking to sell a product to 18 to 34 year olds um you, you could go to the u.s census um website and and you know you'll be able to find the demographics of your market. Um, there's a lot of detailed information. It's all free. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're not looking for you know we we're not impressed by the money you would be spending on on market research. We just want you to um, have an understanding of you know who you're selling to and why they're going to buy the product and and on what basis are you making your decisions. Your, your, and um, Google is my best friend when I do prospecting. So yeah, Google's always uh, you know the best uh, search engine that I use for for prospecting. Purposes. And a little more sophisticated would be like LexisNexis or Hoover's, that are industry research teams that are out there that we pay a subscription to. That we may do some background checks on companies or an industry to see if it's worthy to, to pursue a loan. Do you do you generally share that information with the person that's coming to get a loan? So say someone comes in, they, they give you this information that they have, but you went on Lexus, Texas, and you found that this particular market segment area, the percentage of, of businesses that do well in it is less than average, where the bank would reconsider even doing business with them. Is that something that you'd share with that small business lender? We wouldn't typically pull a LexisNexis on an industry. We would pull it on the actual yeah. business that's applying for a line or a loan. Okay. Um, and if there's any information that comes up that was pertinent to the decision that we made, then yes, we would share with them. But typically, we wouldn't share the entire report with with the customer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so something I've always been curious about, and, and I know this is a real specific question to each individual loan, but pricing, you said, that, you know, talking about the pricing of your products and how you, is that something you would help a applicant figure out if they're new to the business? I mean, how to you know, set their prices. I mean, I know you can look at your competitors' prices, but if you're starting a business that you think you have a better product, you're going to want to price it higher, but how high, you know, is that something you help with or how does somebody go about determining that? That's well, another course. <laughs> that's what I figured. I mean, it's probably it a long course. answer, but is that something that you would ask market, your banker? How to conduct a market analysis. And it may be a simple SWOT chart, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you yourself, before you're going into that business, should complete one of those templates so you'll understand what you're going to be up against. If you feel that 
your proposition is better to somebody else and that means that your pricing should be what then that's what you have to do you can always be competitive and match pricing down the road to stay in the game but that's your personal decision you know the banker can only help you say what do you need to acquire capital to get you to that point but you as a business owner have those real tough decisions do i want to stay in this game Right. So we would like to think that when it comes to your business, you're the expert of that business. We're the experts on the financial side. So when it comes to pricing your own products and services, that, that would typically be uh, on your side. Yeah. Have, are you familiar with SCORE? Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I think if you had a mentor in that in the industry that you're um, looking to get into, I mean, they would probably be able to help you, you know, with pricing specifics based on your overhead and market. Score's on the call right now, so Score could hear us. So. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> thank nice you. Greg. Score's online, right? They're, they're yeah. listening, yes. It was, not a, it was not an intentional plug, but I do, I do, I do uh, really firmly believe in Score. And yeah, we do a lot of work with Score in it as well, uh, yeah. from the banking yeah. perspective. We appreciate the plug. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the voice from above. Yeah. <laughs> And how many people in the room have either have a business plan or have attempted a business plan or are uh, are going to be taking a stab in the near term? Okay. <laughs> That's good. I mean, basically, it's a, it's a tool, and it's you know as as Joe said, it's it, um, it's fluid. You need to be flexible because things change, and uh, but it's 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 a good starting point. And, and it keeps you focused. It's not only a good starting point, it's a necessary starting point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I find that uh, that entre many entrepreneurs, they're, they're so clever uh, uh, about what they've developed that's got them motivated to get into business that sometimes they, they feel invincible uh, and they, they know that product and they know it's going to, you know, in their gut it's going to be successful, but, but not having a, a well thought out full business plan inhibits that entrepreneur who's got a great idea, uh, but just doesn't really know how to execute. get it to the next level, to, to execute it, to potentially scale it to the to the next level, bring in the resources, both you know human capital and financial capital. It's necessary to grow the business. Um, you know, and I learned that the hard way. Uh, um, uh, when I first went into business, I was one of those uh, entrepreneurs that th thought he knew everything uh, and uh, got that great advice from uh, from a chamber member who was, an, who was an accountant who basically slapped me upside the head like an NCIS back in the head and said, if you don't know everything, you need to do this better and sat me down. And, and uh, from that point forward, I, I've been a, a, a business planner or a strategic planner because it's just necessary. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Our business cards are up front. Uh, please feel free to use us as a resource. You know, reach out to us for anything, information, questions, bounce ideas off of us. We're always available. And, um, you know, we'll hang out for a little bit thereafter and uh, try to get to know some of you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. You're going to take a, a tote bag on your way out because I... <laughs> They're no longer available in the supermarket. Thomas, <laughs> <laughs> can I get the slides? I got like seven emails from people like me. Already? Yeah. 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 We can share it, Michael. Everybody. Everybody, throw them out. Not throw them out. Send them out. Everybody's getting them. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, guys. This cafe. Great job, guys. Thank you, Tom.